at five tonight. A study being done at Yale shedding some light now about how a mother can pass Zika on to her unborn child. And it could lead to a breakthrough in fighting that virus has been linked to a number of birth defects and even death. News 8's medical reporter Jocelyn Amenda joins us now with the very latest. Jocelyn. And Darren, this is a pretty significant finding because Yale researchers say it is one step closer to solving the Zika virus puzzle. In a laboratory inside this Yale School of Medicine facility, researchers have identified two cells located in a woman's placenta that can carry Zika virus. Um, the virus is being replicated within these cells, and so it's lighting up green. The placenta provides the oxygen and nutrients a baby needs to grow. Kellyanne Gerardo, who specializes in studying viruses, says one of the cells they found generally protects the fetus. Zika is capable of overcoming this barrier and, um, and finding a cell type that is susceptible to infection. The cells are able to harbor Zika, creating a reservoir for the virus to replicate. Obstetrician Dr. Michael Simone was also part of the investigative team. There's one question of how does it actually cross the placenta, but once it's in the placenta, we do think that these are the cells that allow it to replicate and grow in number. Still, they are not certain how Zika leads to an infant with microcephaly, resulting in a smaller head and facing developmental issues. We do know that it has a specific like for the brain and that that's where it wants to go. The results could lead to coming up with a way to potentially block Zika from infecting the fetus. It is estimated about one in five women show symptoms of Zika, and that's why Dr. Simone encourages women who can get pregnant or who are pregnant who have traveled to a Zika-exposed area to alert their doctors. He says they only have about 12 weeks to test for Zika after being possibly exposed.